Hello, third graders. Today we're going to do subtraction. And we're going to do subtraction that is sometimes called with borrowing. And sometimes it's called regrouping. It's sort of the same thing. And I will show you the steps. Borrowing, regrouping, subtraction. Okay, here's a few examples. Okay, subtraction, borrowing. Subtraction, that's the sign for subtraction, means to take away. We're taking away. When we subtract, we always start in the ones place, and then we move on to the tens place. If there was another place here, it'd be the hundreds place, but there's not. We always start from the ones place. There's always going to be a ones place. And we go from the bottom, we're taking the bottom away from the top number. We always try to take the bottom number away from the top when the problem is set up like this. Okay, so think about this. If that's true, then I'm trying to take 8 away from 1. Okay, well, there's 1. There's no way I can borrow 8 from 1. The most I can borrow from 1 is 1. So when I'm borrowing, what do I have to do? Let me show you. Again, I want to take 8 away from 1. I cannot do that. Nobody can. So I need to know what else I can do. Where's my... There we go. So here's where the word borrowing comes in. Pretend you need to take 8 away from 1, but you know you can't. So what do you do? Well, one way I would teach you in school is to say... You can't do it there. Go next door and borrow from there. All right. So I'm going to borrow from the 5. I'm going to make the 5. I'm going to borrow 10 from the 5. Now you might say, borrow 10 because it's in the tens place. Just watch my footwork here. Just watch what I do with my marker. I'm going to change the 5 to a 4 because now I only have 4 tens in that group. Where did the tens go? Well, they had to go over here. And 10 plus 1 is 11, and I just get to add that to it. So that's the setup. Again, I couldn't take 8 from my 1. I had to borrow from my 4, or my 5, excuse me. My 5 becomes a 4. The 10 I borrowed from the 10's place goes to the 1's place and makes 1 11. And let's stop there. Now that I've borrowed and I can answer yes to this question, I can do the math. Now my question is, can I take 8 away from 11? Well, yeah, I can. Because 11 is more than 8 or as big or more than 8. When I take 8 away from 11, I get 3. So I can do that side. Okay, now... This side, the tens place, I take three away from four. Again, the bottom from the top. What is three minus four? Well, it's one. And what is 51 minus 38? It's 13. You're borrowing from the tens place because you don't have enough in the ones place to do what you need to do. So you're borrowing from the tens, giving it to the ones, adding the 10, which is really adding a one in front of whatever number that is, and then you're doing the math. Let's do another one. Next example, 30 minus 17. Okay, what have we learned so far? We always start in the ones place, and we always start from the bottom, can I take it away from the top? Well, here, there's nothing there. Zero is nothing. I can't take seven away from zero. What do I do? I know I have to borrow from my neighbor next door, the tens place. So I take a group of tens out. That makes this a two. The next thing I do is add that 10 number, the one that makes it a 10, next door. Since I had a zero, the one I add 
makes it a 10. Then I try again, bottom to the top. Can I take seven away from 10 now? Yes, 10 is bigger than seven. I get three left. Let's go next door. Two minus one, or excuse me, one minus two. There's my one, there's two, that's one. Hey, what is 30 minus 17? It's 13. Notice my steps. Notice how I'm borrowing from the tens, changing that number. It gets smaller by one from three to two. The one that I borrowed from there, that's really a 10. I know it's confusing. Just write that as a one next to the number that's already there. And what's your answer? Let's try one more. Okay, I want to tell you something. In today's problems, you have to borrow on every one. I made it that way so you practice this. And I want you to show me the steps like I'm going to show you now on each problem. So the last few days, showing me your work has been as important for me as getting the right answer. So really watch this one and let's go through it together. Okay, the big problem is 62 minus 29. Well, I'm subtracting and I always start over at the ones place. Okay, I have, can I take nine away from two? If I have two, I cannot take nine away from that. I cannot do that. Again, I need to borrow from the next door. In this case, that's the tens place. Because the number's a six, now so I'm gonna change it. Now, when, I, when you show me your work, show me by crossing out the six that you know you cross out the six. Show me by writing the five, you know you took one away from the tens place. By adding that here, you showed me that you regrouped, that you borrowed, but put it by the 12, the two, excuse me, by the two, making it a 12. Now, now can I do this row? Now can I take nine from 12? Well, yeah, I can. Nine from 12 is three. Let's go to the other side. Now it's five and two. Can I take two away from five? Remember that six is crossed out, you're dealing with a five now. Five minus two is three, 33. So 62 was my first, 62 minus 29 is 33. Show me your steps, show me that you're crossing out, show me that you're borrowing to the number of the ones place. I'm gonna to try to sneak one more in here. Now some of you know how to do this very well, I bet, I really don't know you yet as math students, and some of you might need help. It's always okay to get help, okay? But this is what we're working on today. Remember, everyone I'm giving you, you need to borrow. You need to borrow. One more quick one. Okay, remember today I set these all up so that you have to borrow from the tens place. But let's go through it again. We got 71 minus 19, we're taking away. We always start in the ones place. We start from the bottom to the top. If I have one thing, how can I take nine away from it? I can't. Oh, I'm gonna borrow from the tens place. The seven is crossed out. Show me that. What did you take away? You took, you're taking one group of 10, one minus seven is six. The one that you borrowed goes over here. Stop. Now, question. And the one, can I take nine minus 11? Can I do that? Yes, that's two. One step left. Six now minus one. That sounds like five. Remember, my original problem is 71 minus 19, but this is how it looks when you're done with it, and there's your answer. Show me the steps, good luck, get help. If you're an expert at this already, terrific. If you're not, don't worry. Practice will make some difference, we'll get there. Try your best, submit your work to Schoology, and thanks so much.